Hi, Pat Love back with Pat's Two Cents. Here with Rashad. Now Rashad was getting ready to tell you about how he got attacked in the middle of the night. And he's going to tell you from here what happened, what it was, and then we'll go into detail as to what causes that and how you get rid of it, how he got rid of it. Here you go. Go on, Rashad. Help yourself. All right. So, yeah, sleep paralysis is what, like, a doctor or, I don't know, that, that's how they call it. If you ever come to them and you tell me I'm having this type of, you know, thing happen, but it's, it's really a demonic spirit. Right. That, you know, they call it, they used to call it right, the devil right your back or something like that. The devil um, riding your back? Yes. Wow. Yeah, that's what they had call it the devil riding your back or you know it's when you feel like you're laying down and sleeping and you 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 all of a sudden open your eyes up but you can't move right you probably will feel like something is on the top of you right um, exactly that that started with me when i was around 13 years old mm. um from me watching a movie that's why you should be very careful with what you you know watch because what? that stuff really do come from, you know, movies and stuff like that. Yes, you open doors by watching some things. Go on. Exactly. And, um, what were you watching, so, by the way, if you don't mind me asking? Um, Exorcism Syndrome of Emily Rose. See that? Um, it's one of those Exorcist movies. I, uh -huh. I was, kept watching it, and I'm, I'm 13 years old now, and I kept watching that movie, and my mother rented rented the movie, and the last night I watched it, the the power cut off around like eight o'clock in our apartment, and it cut off just all of a sudden. Ah! Oh. And um, it was like my apartment was huge and it was pitch black and scary. I I don't like sleeping in the dark, so <laughs> I stayed up. I went in the front room and sat on the couch. My sister was sleeping on the couch, and I just sat on the couch. And I'm in the front room by myself with just me and my sister. And we had, it was around Christmas time, so we had like a Christmas tree. Right. And I heard this laugh over there near the Christmas tree. Oh my goodness. It was exactly like the movie. And I, and I wasn't a, like hallucinating or anything like that. I, this was clear. Like you I, were wide I was, awake. Yeah. I'm, I'm wide awake sitting on the couch in the dark. Mm. The power is, I'm all awake for the power to cut my cord so I can go back to sleep. And I heard it. As soon as I heard that laugh, like two minutes later, the car cut back on all of a sudden. Wow. And the night, I went, and, and when the power cut back on, I went into the room and I went, tried to go to sleep. And this, this is what happened to me. And this never happened to me in my life, like up to this point. Um, I was laying in my bed and in my dream, or well, I think it was just real. Um, my eyes were, I opened my eyes up, I couldn't move. Mm -hmm. And I That's was looking real. in my room. I had my light on in the room. And the room looked exactly the same way that I when I went to sleep. And I felt these invisible hands rubbing on my chest. Oh I couldn't move and I just felt these invisible hands and I could I'm you know, just looking around like, what is going on? I'm thirteen years old and this and I'm experiencing something like this. So this uh. so I just waited and then it stopped. And I I like got up, but it felt like I was already up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> was I know that's right. And um I went into my mom room and tried to go to sleep in there because I was just getting to sleep with myself to this point, at this point. And um, I went to her room and I had a weird dream like I never had before. It's like in the, in my dream, I'm in my mother room, the lights is off. It's exactly how it was when I went to sleep. And her, I saw my mother, her eyes was like really big and yellow. Oh. Her voice was like deep. I know it was like demonic. She said something to me. And she grabbed me, and the dream distorted, and I woke up. Oh, and, wow. Yeah, I, this all happened in the same night. I went back, tried to, and I went back into my room, because I said I can't sleep in my mother's room. And um, same thing again. I'm laying in my bed, eyes are open, hands are on my chest, rubbing me. And at this point, after that, for like four and a half years, I had kept having those experiences of sleep paralysis. Oh. That's what they call it, but it was the, the mind of spirit that has got that I believe it latched on to me from watching one of those horror movies, horror films. You see that? You, you know? see that, you guys? That's why you have to be careful what you put in your eye gate, what you entertain. 
further Rashad let me ask you one question hold that thought do not lose it please okay going from hotel to hotel hold it right there okay. did was it the exact same manifestation every time when they tried to pin you down in the bed or did they do yeah. different things oh man it, it, it was conjunction of both it was the same thing and then it was like different experiences like different type of things like just to give you one quick one. Um, yeah, 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 that's what I want. Um, I'm laying down in my bed. This is one of the experiences. And it's like my eyes were closed, but I was sleeping. And I felt like somebody was standing over me and drooling over my face. I could feel spit dropping on my face. Yeah. Wow. I yeah, I woke up. Cause I woke up and wiped my face. It felt real. Like somebody was standing over me. How gross. Yeah drooling like a dog or something it's just wow. it's giving me the chills just talking about it now <laughs> wow but yeah and um yeah I, I, oh man i can give you a lot of it you know well you can uh, give yeah, a few more because other people may have had these experiences that's the only reason we're going over them we're not glorifying the devil we're warning yeah. people about stuff that can happen to them because after you share a few of yours i'm going to share a few of mine too and then you're going to tell everybody how you got rid of yours okay well, uh, another time um i felt like it literally was kind of ripped me out of my body oh wow um, yeah, like, it, it, it was like a dream. It, it always been, like, weird dreams I have. And this is how I know it was about to start happening again, where I felt like I was being held down. But it's like I dream, and then the dream will be interrupted, pretty much, until something would just come over me. And it literally feel like it's trying to, like, rip, yeah, literally, I can feel pain. Like, it's like, it's like mm. I can't even explain, like, I'm working the hour or something. Like, oh. to rip me. It's just weird. It's yeah, that is. Panic is evil. It was just some weird stuff. But, um, yeah, I had times where that, you know, felt like I was trying to get ripped out of my body. Or, I don't know. But um, and I also had times where I think I would see, I would wake up every like I would wake up and um, I would look at my reflection on my TV because I used to have those uh, old kind of TVs with right. the big old backside. And right. I would look at the reflection on the TV and I would literally see a, a, a figure moving away from me every oh. time I wake up. It's happened every time I wake up. Oh. I got so used to doing this to where every time I wake up, I look dead at the TV and I would see something moving away from me oh, every my night, goodness. Every, every morning. Yeah, it's, it's weird. And, um, so, and then I'm going to give you one more. Yeah. Um, one time I was, one time I was at home, I believe, I, I know I was by myself. And um, my mom and my sisters must have left. And I had an experience where I felt like I'd been held down again. And I woke up. And as soon as I woke up, I heard a knock on my door. And I thought it was my sister. I'm like, and I heard this clear as they like. And I'm like, okay, what did she want? And I got up. I know what they wanted you to do. They wanted you to open the door. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I opened it because I didn't know. I'm of course, of course you didn't know. It was a soft knock. It was like, it sounded like my sister, how she would knock. And I opened the door. Nobody was there. Yep. And I looked around in the house. Everybody was gone. I was there for myself that morning. Yeah. So, yeah, it was It was letting me know. God was letting me know that this thing was because I, I, when I was a kid, I really didn't know if I was really experiencing this or I was going crazy. Mm -hmm. God started, the, the older I got, God started kind of opening up my eyes and letting me know that this is real. Right. Okay. Right. So, now, real, so. what I want to know is how did you get rid of it? Okay. Whew. This is where 
summer gets really crazy. So this was in the summer of, I won't give no date, but mm-hmm. <laughs> this is basically uh, fast forward it four and a half years later, and I'm 17, like earlier. Um, whew, okay. So the night I was getting tired of it. I was getting tired of not being able to sleep good, and you mm-hmm. know, I was just getting tired of it. So yes. one day it was during the daytime. Um, I just stood up and started praying. I read, I read my Bible out loud, and I started. I was home by myself, and I started praying out loud, reading Bible verses, and just praying, and just saying, "God, please get rid of this. You know, deliver me, set me free." And what happened was, I got this feeling over me of fear, and I got sleepy. So I'm like, I don't want to go. I don't want to be sleeping. I'm scared, and you know. So I waited for my mom. I waited for my mom. I said, I'm gonna wait till my mom come home, and then I go to sleep. <laughs> so she, 20 minutes later, she came home, and I went into the room and went to sleep. And it was this was like around 12 in, in the afternoon. Um, I went in my room, closed my door, and my I had my bed against the corner of the room. And um, in my dream, I must have angered this demon because. I was dreaming, and then my dream was interrupted, and I just for the first time I actually heard it. It sounded like a human, but I knew at the same time it wasn't. But mm-hmm. I could tell when my dream was like it was physically shaking me back and forth, and I heard it. It was like <clears throat> it was really angry. Mm. It was like Rrr. like it was just angry that I was praying and trying to because it knew what I was trying to do. Right, right, right. And I was like, I was like, oh my god, like I think, what what is going on? And I woke up. And, you know, of course, I, I was like, wow, that, that shook me up. So I went and, you know, I just got up. I told my mother about it. She tried to, you know, she started praying over my room. And I'm thinking to my, I'm, I'm in the front room, and I can hear her in the room, pray, you know, praying over my room. I'm like, well, uh, I don't know if that's going to help. Because well, I, I tried to do that earlier. This is what this is what happened. But anyway, um, how I got rid of it was, it was the next, I, I had a little, after that experience, I started having other experiences where I was laying on my, you know, laying in the front room, and I would wake up and something would literally push me on my, push my shoulders. Mm. Something invisible would literally push my shoulders. Wow. Um, yeah, it was, I started having like weird things started happening. It wasn't those dreams, but more it was actually real. Like mm. I thought it, it's like God kind of really brought it out in the open. Exactly. Um, so this is how it ended. Um, it was a morning. The night before, I didn't get no sleep. I was up all night because the thing kept me up all night. Um, I went in my mother's room that morning, and she saw me. She was like, what's wrong with you? She was, my eyes was like red. I just looked kind of weird, and I felt weird, too. Um, I was in her room, and I heard, I, I, was, I, I can hear something coming down the hallway. Um, I thought, I was, I was like, what? It sounded like somebody was running down the hallway. I'm like, why is my sister running down the hallway? And then... It came, it came into the room, it was invisible, and the, the presence of this demon was so strong, I can tell you where it was at. I couldn't see it, but I knew exactly where it was. Like. Yes, was yes, I've had that experience. Was. Yes, yes. And it ran past my mother. My mother said she saw a shadow, but I didn't see anything. I'm wow. She, she's in the closet with her back turned against me, so she didn't see, you know, she couldn't see me. Right. She could see, like, you know, you see a shadow of somebody walking past you from behind. Right, right. And... It ran past her and went and stood in front of me, and I was like frozen in fear, looking like looking at where this presence is at. Mm-hmm. And I got up and I ran out of the house. I grabbed my Bible and I ran out of the house, and I called my grandmother. I was like really upset, like scared, and you know, so I was like, "This is you no, know, this is because this is kind, of, this is stuff that you will be put into a mental institution for exactly, no exactly. Leave you, you know. So I was like, but I'm I'm young, like seventeen, experiencing this. This is scary, you know." I didn't know what was going to happen to me. Right. So, you know, but God had a plan to set me free. At uh-huh. because, um, that same day, he took uh, they took me up to the church, and my mother told my pastor what happened. And, you know, he prayed, he, he prayed over me, and then he told me to go and talk to the prophet. You know, he, the prophet was at the church that morning. And um, I went and spoke with him, and before I could even tell him anything, he already knew. You know, God already did on, you know. Had revealed it to him. He revealed it to him. He was just telling me, oh, he was telling me, oh, you used to wrestle with this thing at night. I Look like, at yeah, that. He, he was just telling me all types of stuff. I was like, he's like, don't worry about it because it's gone. And what he did was he, 
he started praying over me. He just did some. He just was doing stuff. He just praying over me, and then for some reason, I went back to the house, went back into the room where I had the experience at, and I don't know what got into me. It was after he laid hands on me. He gave me, I believe, it was the Holy Spirit. Cause yes. After that, I was like bold. That is boldness. Huh? Bold. That's what I said. Yeah. Bold. Uh huh. Bold. I had this boldness, and I went back into the room where it happened. I know some people be like, "You crazy?" I went go back in there. <laughs> and I did. <laughs> I had my Bible, and I started praying. I started like just boldly, just just re reciting the word, the, the saying, the name of Jesus. There you I go. Defeated. I'm 17 years old, and I'm doing this, and right. I'm shaking at the face with the lights off in the room. Right. In there. Right. Up, Come on. <laughs> and um, I'm, I'm, I'm doing that. I'm walking. I'm just keep, uh, you know. And then I went outside and I walked around my house seven times. And I'm just saying the Lord's prayer. You know, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Yes, yes, yes. There. And then that that was on a Saturday, right? The right. Next day I went to church, and the pastor called. You know, said if anybody want to get prayed over, um. And I forgot to mention, when I was praying over the house, I was saying, in the name of Jesus, you know, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. So, um, anyways, I went to church the next day, and the pastor said, if anyone wants to get prayed over, come up to the altar. And I was the only one to get up and go to the altar. Yeah. As soon as I walked up, he was like, whoa, I can feel the... Difference. The, the, the Holy Spirit on you. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, he was like, um, he was like, I, you really love the Lord, don't you? And I was like, he's like, you really want this? I was like, yeah. I, you know, I was thinking to myself, oh, yeah. <laughs> you, know what I mean? you know what I just went through? Yes, of course. I don't want nothing to do with being or anything like that. I know, that's um, right. He started prophesizing over me. He said some things, and he, you know, he, he said, you know, some things that may, that, that's going to, not say that will come in, in, in my future. And he said some key things, though. He said, let me tell you what he said. He said that the devil knows what God has in store for you. Right. And he wants to discourage you. Right. God is going to use you for something almighty. Yes. He said that and the past prophet got said that the day before. So they both said something said, you know Almost the same thing. Something. Look at that. Yeah. Confirmation. And so when I was at the altar and before I could walk away, my pastor stopped. Now there's no way in the world he knew that I went back home and that day and prayed over the house that day. Right. The day before. There wasn't no way he, he knew that. So, anyways, he, he, when I went to walk away, he said, you cast that spirit out your mother's house. <laughs> <laughs> I said, what? See, the working of knowledge, the gift of, oh, I love when the Holy Spirit and its gifts start to work. Oh, I just love that. Yes, he, he said, you cast that spirit out your mother's house. Look and at that. And I looked that. at my mom, I'm like, did, did you tell them that I, that I went home right, and did right, that? They right, said, no. right, right, Look at that. So it wasn't, it wasn't no way of him even having the idea that I did that. Right. So I just, he only saw me get prayed, he just prayed over me, and I just went my, you know, went my way, but I didn't come there and say, hey, Pastor, I prayed over the house, and I did this, and did that. Exactly. So, so, but I, now, at that point, I knew that God was, in a way, revealing his stuff to me through that experience. Yes. Yes. Because that, that, that's, it's, it's just no way of him knowing that. But after that, I, I started sleeping like a baby. I know I you did. I experience no more. Oh, God is good. You see, you guys. Oh, Rashad, thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Yeah. You know, you You're guys, welcome. you do not understand. This stuff is real. A lot of people want to say, hell ain't real. Heaven ain't. Whatever you want to believe, you go right on ahead. But what would demons need to be messing with you for? And where did demons come from if it wasn't from hell? Think about it. Duh. When you look at how they try to mess with us, how they try to mess with you, all the things that they try to do to instill fear and to hinder you and cripple you for your whole life. You do not realize the more they attack you, it shows that you have a, you are a major threat to the enemy's camp. And when Satan is trying to come against you like that, 
you have to if you are born again and filled with the holy spirit even if you're not yet filled with the holy spirit but you're working towards it you i mean you've got a measure of him but you can be filled to the full you have got to start battling spirit by spirit that's why we call on the name of jesus i rebuke you in the name of jesus as something that should automatically fly out of your mouth when you get seasoned in the lord now i'm going to share one or two of mine according to how god leads and i'm telling you these demons are real they yeah. are real the first one i ever encountered moved and and landed and was shaped just like the spider-man you know how you watched the movie the spider-man this one was just like it no hair no ears no nothing all it was was a smooth round head shoulders arms legs feet man's you know man's uh figure but there were no real definitions of of uh features now i am half awake i call it a twilight sleep when you are very much aware of what's going on around you and you turn around rashad this freaked me out i'm telling you this guy in this dream i'm feeling an evil in my house i felt like somebody had just broken in my house and i was speaking out loud saying something is coming something has gotten in my house oh no don't let it hurt me lord and it's coming into the bedroom i know exactly where it is cannot see a thing but i know exactly where it is and i know exactly what shape and form it has taken and it jumps up on the foot of my bed jumps in the air and lands on me pinning his hands on my shoulders and his knees on my legs I, f I it was just like the way spider-man jumps up and lands that's exactly how he landed on me and wow. i am fighting and pushing i feel his weight i feel him there and i'm pushing and i'm hollering get off of me leave me alone and i am just frantic now i had only been saved for probably a little less than a month that's how new in the Lord I was. Thank God for a church that taught us how to battle, you know, demons. How to mm -hmm. battle the, yeah, the things we don't want. Rebuke it in the name of Jesus. That's how they always dealt with it. So that's all I knew. And as this thing had me pinned, I am, the more I fight it, the weaker I get. The more I struggle the weaker and wimpier I get. And I get to the point, I'm so weak now, not only can I not move any longer, I cannot speak. So the tears are running to the back of my head onto my pillow. And I mumble to myself, I guess he's got me. I guess I'm going to die like this. I don't have any weapons. I don't have anything to fight with. And a voice, when they say a still small voice, this was literally a still small voice, whispers to me, you have Jesus. Now, because I only know you rebuke, you know, you use the name of Jesus when you finish praying and you rebuke, but you're rebuking stuff, you know, people have alcoholic addictions or whatever. I'm not knowing that I can use the name of Jesus to get rid of this. So in my mind, I thought, well, that's all I have is a name. Had no idea how powerful the name of Jesus was, is. So here I am laying there, can't move, thinking it's over, and mauling that statement over around and around in my head till I finally said, well, maybe I better do something while I'm still alive. And even though I couldn't talk, Demons understand a mumble because God articulates it for them. Oh, this is the way I sounded. I rebuke you. That's how I sounded.
because I couldn't yeah. articulate. I was that weak. Wow. I said it over and over and over until it became, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Then uh, over and over, then I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And then all of a sudden this fire came up in me, this boldness, I call it Holy Ghost boldness, and I hollered, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And I sat up in my bed and pushed his weight, I felt his weight, off of me, Boop, he was gone. And I was sitting up in my bed, wide awake wow that's when i knew when i had that experience the first thing that came to my mind was god allowed that experience to teach me spiritual warfare firsthand wow and um I also forgot to mention, it's probably not even relevant anymore, but um, to confirm that I wasn't like hearing stuff when that, that first night that I heard that that giggle or laugh when I was in the I family. knew that was a demon when you said it. Because um, years later, uh, last year, my sister told me that she heard, because I told her what I heard that night at that old apartment. She was like, well, I heard that too that night. Look at that. Look at that. They just never talk to each other. Oh, wow. And she um she also said one night she was in the front room and she heard something breathing in there. Oh, when God has shown you and proven to you how much more powerful he is, his name is, his Holy Spirit is, his word is, than any demon, you know, that you can drudge up from anywhere knowing that he is all powerful eliminates the necessity to be so afraid god will give you authority god will give you boldness where you know i'm the head one up in here baby because i've got jesus backing me up i've got the word of god backing me up i can praise god I, i've got god on my side and if god be for me who can be against me? And we're Amen. gonna close on that note. Rashad, thank you so much for doing this video with me. You're I welcome. hope a lot of people got help from this one. Mm. Okay. I hope you guys take heed. Remember, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Keep that handy. Praise God Amen. and quote God's word. You have got all the ammunition you need. God bless you.